So welcome to part four of our series on how to build riches and wealth the kingdom way. We, as I said, um, throughout the month of January and February, we will be looking at this process, this kingdom way and this revelation as far as building um, riches and wealth is concerned. And you know, this is, I'd like to share and share personal experience so that we understand. Most of the, the lessons I am teaching, these are the things that the Holy Spirit began to teach me as far as the art of making money and building wealth is concerned. And I have documented my lessons that the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. have taught me on the things that, you know, you can do uh, to, to build riches and wealth. And I've said here many times that if you pray only for financial open doors or financial blessings, you will never be blessed. Prayer is just part of the equation in building riches and wealth. And, uh, and, and, and the biggest chunk, the biggest chunk of that equation is you understanding the kingdom principles, the kingdom intelligence, the, the spiritual intelligence that you can learn and begin to apply in your life and you will see changes, right? I used to pray a lot too, oh, Father, blessing financial, all of that. Then God began to teach me since 2016 and so. And when I, when I started practicing these things and learning these things and putting them to work, I can categorically tell you I have never known lack financially and I've never prayed that, oh, Father, bless me financially, right? You can pray for other things. You can pray for good health because if you are not healthy, you cannot make money. You can pray for strength because if you, but the Bible says it is he that given you strength to make well. Look, that's where prayer is coming, right? You can pray for favor that when you begin to practice the principles of the kingdom on how to make wealth, the people that you come in contact with can favor you. Even the Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom and statue and in favor before God and before man. And these are things that I'll, I'll keep on, like I'm teaching, I'll keep on teaching them. So if you, if you really want to see a different dimension in your, in your ability to actually build riches and wealth, you will begin to see a different kind of manifestation in your financial life. And let me tell you something, majority of the problems that people pray about is, is if, you, if you give people the money they need, all their problems will disappear. All of it, see somebody having headache and sleepless night because of one problem, they're fasting and praying. Immediately you give them money, the headache disappears. All the trouble go away and they are fine. They stop crying. See, somebody will call you and say, cry, say, cry. So what is the matter? When they go up and come down, majority of it, money will be the root cause of it. There are many people that demons cannot torment them. There are many people that family altars are not that powerful. But the rest of their problems in their lives, their money problems, because they are broke. They are poor. So they get to live a life of suffering, a life of poverty and, and struggle, not because the enemy is behind it, but because they lack the intelligence, they lack the divine intelligence to put to work, to begin to build wealth, okay? So I want to challenge you, if you are here for the first time, make sure you create time, go to the YouTube channel and look at part one, part two, part three, okay? Because we are taking, I'm taking you, this is a step-by-step -step process. And before the end of February, we'll end a big chunk of the process of building riches and uh, building wealth. And my belief is that if this year runs out, many people are going to experience a total transformation in their financial life. There was, even to today, I will say, one thing I'm, that I know that I've actively done this, I have raised many millionaires in terms of mentoring and working them, coaching, all of that. One thing I did in 2021, 2021, yes, I selected a few of the mentees that submit under me 
And I, I said, okay, if you have been running a business for more than two years, let me know. And you have never made, you have never saved your first one million. I'm not talking about making money, eating, and then you combine. So what I'm talking about cold one million slip in your bank account that is your money. Then why you're able to pay your rent, you're able to do your stuff. And a few people indicated that they're running business for two years, three years, they have never had one million cash on their own. Let me tell you, money you cannot keep, you cannot manage. And money you cannot manage, you cannot multiply. That's why every rich and successful person understand the art of keeping money, that savings, managing it properly, and of course, then multiplying it, right? There's a video that I shared in the group on the, the money mindset, and I went deep into these things a bit deeper. I hope that you have gone through that, that, that video. And I sent a few of them, and I think there were about seven of them. And the goal was that before December 2021, all of them, must have made their first, uh, uh, um, they must have saved their first one million in the bank accounts. Before November, all of the seven people had their first one million. What changed? All I was doing was, I was every week I am teaching them, okay, do this. This is how you should start doing this. Change this in your habits. Change this in your life. Change this in your finances. Change this and all of that. And then there was that change. And I taught them many of these things, not even as deep as we are going to the meaning of these things I am teaching you today, all right? So my, my belief is if you practice them, you see results. Even, even last year, I think I told some sometimes that I was too busy, I traveled a lot. I still submitted a few mentees who wanted to make their first one million. And I think I had only two sessions with them. The rest of the year, they never have time. But let me tell you something. Men, I think three of them came to me and confirmed that they saved their first one million. One was able to buy their land and all of that just from simple teachings and financial principles and intelligence that do that. Let me tell you, if you run away from knowledge, as far as money is, it's called financial intelligence. If you run away from financial intelligence and you're not willing to pay the price and the time to understand financial intelligence, especially the kingdom way, as far as building riches and wealth is concerned, you are going to, to struggle. So if you are here just because you know you want to, you're just following a session and all of that, and you're not willing to practice and put it to work, oh, trust me, you're missing it out. But I know that if you put it to work and do practice full attention, trust me, you see a lot of changes in what you do. So we are looking at part four of our series on how to build riches and wealth. If I continue on the part one, part two, part three series, have you been blessed with that? Have you been transformed? Have you been taking actions? Just confirm in the chat box. Just write, just write your, just tell me, how has it been for you? This is, a, this is the fourth administration we're having on this. How, how, how has it been for you? Just tell me in the chat box. Let me know that it's, it's valuable teaching, it's valuable administration for you. Okay, so just one person I'm taking action. <laughs> all right that yes if one day you is blessed after this no problem so the rest you are just visiting all right so so today i'll be teaching you the powerful relationship that exists between um absolute personal responsibility and financial and building riches, and of course, uh, uh, building uh, 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 wealth, right? We took time to, 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 to break the difference between riches and wealth in the part one uh, um, series. All right, thank you, our Facebook people, for confirming that your life has been transformed. All right, so let's, let's break through this. And I want to encourage you again, please make sure that you are learning this from, from the dimension of practice, from the dimension of, 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 of high, of high, uh, um, high decision-making that you will change your life and you're gonna change your finances, okay? Let me tell you something. When your financial life starts taking shape, your dreams become effortlessly easy. Very, if you want to do something, just do it. Just travel, just do it, you know, effortlessly easy. You see? So, and it's something you must, you must take conscious actions towards, all right? So what are the major reasons why people 
are struggling financially in life and struggle to build riches and sustainable wealth is lack of what I call absolute personal responsibility. Lack of absolute personal responsibility. I want to tell you something categorically clear. If you don't understand the role of absolute personal responsibility in your life and how it contributes to your financial success and your ability to build wealth that will last. I'm talking about wealth that can last 40, 50, 60, 70 years, right? One of the biggest things that you should be worried about is at the age of 70, you should not be suffering. At the age of 70, you should have a system that consistently makes money for you and give you a good life. The one, of the, one of the most biggest sufferings that is so terrible for me is at, the, at old age, you are old, weak, and you're suffering financially. It's, it's, I think it's one of the biggest things that should not happen to somebody, sincerely, right? So, and, it's, and, and one of the ways to achieve this, you need to understand how to start taking absolute personal responsibility now, and of course, for the rest of your life. I always say, and my belief is, the biggest form of innovation in human history is when a human decides to take personal responsibility to alter their life trajectory and become a better and more successful human being. That's the biggest innovation, actually. Because every other innovation only comes when a human being has altered the course of their life. Like right now, if you are really serious that you want to see a change in your financial status and your ability to build wealth, you need to understand how to take absolute personal responsibility. You need to take the responsibility to alter your life trajectory. Let me tell you, many people are still broke and they were broke five years ago, 10 years ago, and they are still broke today and living hand to mouth and struggling financially because they have not been able to take the personal responsibility to alter their life trajectory. And I'll give you a lot of proofs of the scriptures. Like I said, these are deep revelations that God has taught me from the scriptures. Let's, let's start with Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16. The Bible says, fathers shall not be put to death for their sons, nor, nor shall sons be put to death for their fathers. Everyone shall be put to death for his own sin. Basically, this scripture is talking about personal responsibility. You should take responsibility for your actions. Take responsibility for your life. Don't expect that your father will be put to death because of you, because of your, your, your irresponsible life. You know, if you live an irresponsible life, you will bear the consequences. Nobody will go through the consequences with you. You will go through the negative consequences of irresponsibility. Let us say that you are a thief, for example. If you are a thief, don't expect that your father will be killed because you are a thief. Right? You will, you, if, if you get caught by the mob and the population burn you to death, you will be burned to death, not your father. Father, that verse is very powerful. Fathers shall not be put to death for their son's sins. There are, there are many people who are broke right now because of their actions. It says, no, shall some be put to death for their father's sins. Same as the fathers cannot keep doing the wrong thing and expecting their sons to suffer. Everyone shall be put to death for his own sin. This is just talking about, look, if you're a father, take personal responsibility for your life. If you are a son, take personal responsibility for your life. Stop living an irresponsible life and expecting financial blessings or, or being able to build wealth. There are many people that they are the age of 30 right now. They are the age of, 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 of 35 right now. 
They don't have any stable source of income or any system that can build wealth for themselves, or they're not even part of a system that gives them guarantee for tomorrow. Because in the last five years of their lives, in the last 10 years of their lives, they have been irresponsible. Now, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, which, 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 which speaks so powerfully about what God is looking for. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. The Bible says, I search for a man among them. That's God speaking. I search for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the sake of the land. God is, see, God is almighty. God is all powerful. But God is looking for a man that he can trust. God is looking for a man that has taken absolute personal responsibility to stand in the gap. There are many people that they are struggling financially because they have not taken a stand. They have not taken the responsibility to build up and to stand. Those are two key things in that verse. Ezekiel 22, 30. I search for a man among them who will build up and stand in the gap. I always say something. See, there are many people that God is looking at them like, I just wish you could just change and become better so I can bless you. I just wish that you could just start taking the right absolute personal responsibility so I can change your life. Many people have not taken the stand. And many people are not building up. The last statement of that verse says, that I will not destroy it, but I found no one, even one. God was searching for a man who could build up, who could take the responsibility. God was looking for a man who takes up the responsibility to build up and to stand in the gap. And God could not find a man. If you are not able to take personal responsibility for your life and begin to do your part, like I, I, I always say this many times, the favor of God is useless in the life of an irresponsible person. The grace of God is useless in the life of an irresponsible child of God. Pray for financial open doors as you like. If you are irresponsible in your life, you cannot guarantee financial stability and sustainability. You will leave hand to mouth and you will not be sustainable. In a few years, if care is not taken, you may leave poor for the rest of your life because of irresponsibility. This is, one of the, this is one of the major pillars in wealth creation, taking personal responsibility for your life. It's a major pillar in wealth creation, major, major pillar. Without this pillar of absolute personal responsibility for your life, for your actions, for your decisions, and whatever you do, forget about building riches and wealth. You need to take the personal responsibility to build up and to stand in the gap, according to Ezekiel 23.30. When you do that, then the grace of God will find you and you will see the positive effect of the grace of God. When you begin to pray that the favor of God should encounter you, you will see the effect of that prayer. Many Christians are not able to see the reality of the blessings of God, of the spiritual blessings of God over their life because they lack absolute personal responsibility. According to Ezekiel 22, 30, God is seeking for men and women of responsibility to stand and to build up their lives. It takes more than a wish to succeed in life and especially in finances. 
Tell of God, hear me. Taking personal responsibility means acknowledging and accepting the consequences of your actions and decisions. If you have not grown to the level of maturity where you acknowledge and accept the consequences of your actions and decisions, you are not ready to build riches and wealth. It means being accountable for your own behavior. You are accountable for your behavior and the outcomes that result from your behavior. That's another meaning of absolute responsibility. So if you have this behavior of spending money carelessly, drinking alcohol anyhow, womanizing around and losing money, going to the wrong places and clubbing and all of that, you, you, you should be ready for the outcomes of that behavior rather than blaming others and external circumstances. See, we need to come to terms with this fact. As I said earlier, absolute personal responsibility is among the top five major pillars to building wealth and riches. It's a major pillar. The desire for success and the willingness to take personal responsibility for cr are crucial factors in achieving it. So if you desire, there must be the willingness to take personal responsibility. Nobody can ever do that for you. And if you don't understand this pillar and begin to make this pillar real in your life. You see, let me tell you something. Many people have undulating financial lives. Like, you know, last month they were doing fine financially. This month they are broke. When we're talking about uh, um, sustainable and stable riches and wealth, you have to consistently, your financial life is growing. If, if you still live that kind of life where there are some months where you can pay your rent and some months you not struggle to pay rent, something is wrong. I will just measure the, the stability of your financial life when and uh, 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 four things are guaranteed in your life that you can do without stress. Number one, shelter. If you can provide shelter on your food, you can provide shelter for yourself and your family without stress. That means if you are renting, you, you can consistently pay rent for the whole year without stress. That is a major matrix in measuring your financial stability. Number two, access to healthcare. If you are sick, and you don't think to us to go to the hospital, that's the second matrix that measuring the stability of your finances. If you get sick or you have a son and daughter and they fall sick, you need to borrow money up and down to sort out basic health care, you need to wake up in your finances. Number three, the third matrix that you need to look at as far as building wealth is concern is general welfare and livelihood. Talking about the ability to feed. There are some days you can feed, some days you don't even know how you're going to get money to eat. You need to wake up in your finances. And, and all of these metrics come down to if, if, you are, if your ability to take absolute personal responsibility is weak, let me tell you, these metrics will suffer. These metrics will suffer. The last one is access to education. Whatever kind of education you want to do, if you still struggle to afford it, something is wrong. The foundation of your financial life is wrong. Then any other metrics can begin to come. I, I spoke about welfare and livelihood. That also includes how you look, how you dress. You look cranky and you wear funny, funny dresses. Something is wrong with you because you are financially stable. You should look good. You should reflect on who you are and what you wear. It's not about pleasing people. It's about living livelihood and a good life. And when people that take absolute personal responsibility for their finances believe that no one else is in control of their destiny, let me tell you, if you are listening to me and you believe that someone else is in control of your destiny or your success, 
that is a recipe for failure. You will fail for the rest of your life if you move around and you believe that someone else is in control of your destiny or your success. That is a recipe for failure. Even if you're a married woman and you carry this thing on your head that your husband is, 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 is in control of your destiny and your success, that's the recipe for the failure of that family. You need to be a woman who takes absolute responsibility and you're proactive and your husband can support you. If you are doing the work, you are trying to, to facilitate or enhance the work your husband is doing. You need to take the responsibility to be to support your husband. That is take the, take the absolute responsibility, begin to learn the things. There are some things that you have to learn to become an aspect to the family, to become an aspect to the husband. It makes the family have a higher chance of succeeding. Financial intelligence is deep than what it was seen. So you need to recognize that you have control over your life. God has given you and I the power to have that kind of control. And that our actions and choices have consequences. And people are never very conscious of this. When you take personal responsibility, you are acknowledging that you are accountable for your financial success and financial failure. This therefore means that you are willing to accept the consequences of your actions and work towards improving yourself and your circumstances. Now, let's look at something in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12. See, if, if, if you understand this, like there's a book that I have, I'll launch very soon. I'll launch within this year. It's called Victory in Life, Career, and Business Through Responsibility. Victory in Life, Career, and Business Through Responsibility. It's a book that I'm going to launch within this year because many people get to struggle a lot because they lack this foundational pillar of understanding the art of absolute personal responsibility. Like there are many of you following this session right now, you have problem financially. You have problem in your career. Where you are in your business, which automatically affects your finances. It's not because the devil is that powerful fighting you, no. You are responsible for where you are because there is a dimension of absolute personal responsibility. And when you begin to take for your life, it begins to alter the course of your life. It begins to alter the trajectory of your life. It begins to alter everything everything that you do as a person. Then you begin to see the ripple effect of this personal responsibility in your finances. Now, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12. The Bible says, if you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you alone will bear it. Yes, if you are wise, and you take absolute personal responsibility, you are doing that for yourself. But if you scoff and you are irresponsible, you will bear the negative, painful consequences. There are many people listening to me right now. Yes, you listening to me. All you need to do to get a better year financially and to have the best year of your life and the best financial life ever is for you to make a U-turn. Stop doing certain things that are hurting your financial life. Take personal responsibility and build a more stable and sustainable life. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 12 is therefore expressing the idea that each individual you and I, in our own right, each individual is responsible for their own wisdom and actions. The verse is clearly stating that if a person is wise, if you are wise, you will reap 
habit of taking personal responsibility for yourself. However, it is also stating that a person, if you choose to scoff, if you choose to mock, if you choose to ridicule the art of absolute personal responsibility, you will bear the consequences of your actions alone without anyone else there to share the burden. Let me tell you something. One fact about financial burden is you are always the highest person who bears the consequences. Somebody may step in to support very few people on earth are so lucky and so blessed that anytime they have financial burden, somebody is there to step in to lift up all the burden that one. Very few people are blessed to that extent, very few. Very few people come from families. You, you have a financial burden of one million, two million, someone just house rent. And somebody's always there to step in to lift it up. If you have that kind of person, you are super blessed. But if you begin to interview people here right now, that since this year began, since this year began, and you had financial challenges, and there was somebody on ground immediately to sort you out immediately. Out of the 100 people or how many people that are or 50 people that are here right now, I can tell you not up to two can fully confirm that somebody was ready immediately to lift up the financial burden by giving money. If you are here and you had financial challenge this year and somebody just gave you all the money and lifted the burden, I'm not talking about 1,000, 2,000, right? I'm talking about money that makes sense. They say $100,000 on the boat, $200, $300 on the boat. That is right. Is there anybody here like that? So that we will just come for you, come to you, and that person will adopt you and us. <laughs> you get a point. And I, I swear the, uh, the, the, the pillar of taking absolute responsibility for your life becomes critical because the burden rests on you. That's why Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12 says, if you scoff, if you refuse, if you refuse to take personal responsibility, you alone will bear the burden. There, for many of you, the highest somebody can do is to pity you, Asia. Wear sorrow. That's all. That's all. But you need to move from that level. Pity doesn't lift financial burdens. It is actions that lift financial burdens. So according to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12, the importance of personal responsibility is critically stated. It clearly states that each person is responsible for their own choices and must take ownership of the consequences that come with those choices. So anytime you're making any decision, any choice, ask yourself, this is a question I ask myself always. And this is one thing I am good at in life is I have a plan B for everything. Because I, it's my responsibility. Every decision I make, trust me, there's always a plan B. Because I need to take responsibility for my life. I need to take responsibility for every choice I take. And I should be ready for the consequences. People who take absolute responsibility for their lives are always ready for the consequences. Whatever decision they make. They know if it works out good, if there's, a, if there's a wrong consequence, I know my way out. They are not waiting to blame anybody. They are not waiting for somebody to come and lift on the burden. If somebody shows up, good. If nobody shows up, they move forward. They don't sit, cry, and remain in depression because something went wrong. That is lack of absolute personal responsibility. And this is why many people end up financially poor.
Therefore, when you are willing to take personal responsibility, you are more likely to be proactive and take initiative for your life. When you are willing to take personal responsibility, you are likely, you are highly likely to be proactive with your finances and to take initiative to improve your finances. Many people don't think of different ideas or take proactive actions and take initiatives to improve their financial lives because they have not grown in the place of maturity as far as taking absolute personal responsibility is concerned. Because when you take personal responsibility, you make up your mind to overcome challenges and setbacks that come as far as your financial life is concerned. And you make up your mind that you will make progress towards your financial goals. Show me somebody who understands the pillar of taking absolute responsibility. I will show you somebody who consistently makes progress towards their financial goals. Because they are always proactive and thinking of, thinking of ways that they can improve their financial life. They can perform better. Here is one mindset that wealthy people I have met have, right? I've seen, I, I, one of them, I'm so lucky that, I'm so blessed in my, in my work that I get the privilege to coach, you know, and, and provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and consulting to, 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 to people that, and experience of money in their lives and, and all of that, right? And, and sometimes I, I try to, uh, um, to reason. I try to dig deep into, uh, uh, into how they think, you know, the latest person that I'm currently working with, let me show you a screenshot. If uh, any of you will know her, right? The, the current lady I'm currently working with, let me show you a screenshot. And I, I like to how she thinks, right? My latest person I'm working with, Stella Damashos, the Polar Nigerian actress. I'm currently coaching her right now, right? And, 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 and this, I like the way, the question she was, her goal, her goal, her goal is, you know, I was so marvel. You know, there's a people that you look at it, but you know, you're financially stable and all of that, you should be, but their mindset, their mindset, the wealthy and the rich people, the influential people, command this unique mindset. And that's what I want to share with you right now. Because I have seen a very powerful relationship between apps, the mindset of absolute responsibility and the art of building wealth and riches in a stable and sustainable way. From working with musicians and, and actresses and actors and businessmen who are making millions every month. Here's one thing, one thing, one powerful mindset that they have. The rich and the wealthy often attribute their success, their financial success, to taking personal responsibility for their lives. They take the personal responsibility for their financial life. That's why they will reach out and begin to ask questions. They'll begin to, 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 to seek advice. They'll begin to say, no, it's my, this is going to, I need to do this, I need to do that. They understand, this, this is my observation of working with them. They understand that their financial success is the result of their ability to take absolute personal responsibility for their own decisions and actions, and that they are responsible for their own financial well being. They are responsible for it. Let me give you one secret. If you want to experience change in your finances and your wealth creation, make sure that you are around people who have gone ahead of you money-wise. Listen to them. 
if you are making a if, if you are if your yearly income is 10 million now make sure you are around somebody or you are following somebody or reading somebody who is making a hundred million who is making always doing better than you nobody makes money above the quality of their mindset nobody nobody and let me tell you something one of the deliverance that many people across africa need to receive is that not everybody is wealthy because of uh, of, of, of rituals and all of that. They are hard working people that spend sleepless nights to be where they are in terms of influence, fame, power, and riches. They are wealthy, godly, spiritually powerful, intelligent people. That's one of the major deliverance that people need to. Many people are not working hard or taking up sooner because they believe that no, you know, for me to make money, these people are rich because that is this all light. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, it exists, but not everybody is doing that. I have seen people that are very wealthy and they're putting on less than 16 hours every day of work to maintain that wealth and to become successful. Why should somebody who is in a cult society and doing rituals working hard every day and having sleepless nights? Then that kind of occult is a weak, useless, terrible, unproductive occultic society, right? Yeah. So, what am I saying then? What am I saying? We need to make sure there's one. I wanted to leave here today with making sure that you have understood the relationship between absolute personal responsibility and make it a core pillar in your daily life and consciously using it to transform your finances. Consciously using it to transform your financial life. Know that it is your responsibility. Now, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. The Bible says, therefore, my beloved, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, that's personal responsibility. It takes personal responsibility to know something and then to obey and put it to action. It takes personal responsibility. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Walk out, this is what I'm going to take us. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Walk out, take it. It is your responsibility to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Jesus Christ has already given us the salvation. But for us to see the reality of this salvation and the manifestation of this salvation, we have a responsibility to take. I will keep teaching this and emphasizing this. Anything in the kingdom of God that gives all the responsibility to God and without mentioning your own responsibility is fake. It's not complete. For everything, for manifestation in the kingdom of God, you will see divine responsibility and you will see human responsibility. You will die a poor, broke human being if all you do about your finances is to pray without taking absolute responsibility as far as certain actions are concerned, taking financial actions, understanding financial intelligence, building financial relationships, taking ideas and commercializing them so you make more money out of it. You will die a poor person. That is your responsibility. 
You need to build up and to stand up as God was saying in the book of Ezekiel chapter 22. God was looking for a man to build up and to stand up and to stand in the gap. God was looking for a man who would take the responsibility to build up and to stand up. Now, how to take personal responsibility that will influence your finances and then we we'll pray. Are you being blessed? Are you being challenged? Who is making some firm decisions after today? Let me know in the chat box. We are being blessed. Let me know in the chat box. Who is going to make some firm decision after today? Yes, leave me a comment. Are you being very, very blessed? Good. Yes, I want to pray that it's transformation. You're being blessed and, you, and you're going to alter your finances. By December, we are celebrating a financially stable kingdom entrepreneur and professional, right? Good. Let me tell you something I did. It's, a, it's actually a financial testimony. I, 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 I developed a marketing strategy and it's a, actually part of it. I'm going to launch a book, I think next month. My, my, I'm going to launch a book next month or after next month where is a book where I've documented 30 marketing and sales strategies that I've ever designed and recommended for clients. Then there was one strategy I, I, I wrote down and I said, I'm gonna try in the month of January. And I said a financial goal. And I said in the month of January, I want to make not less than 1.5 million francs, right? Cameroon francs, that was the goal. And I started using that strategy. And that's, that's where, did, did I pray for favor? Yes. I pray for favor. Say, Father, this month of February, favor me financially. When I knock doors for business, I want to there be favor. Lord, the grace to do this. I did I pray for it? Yes. But I took absolute responsibility. Absolute responsibility to implement the strategies, to take financial actions, to read and to absorb certain financial intelligence and to put them to work. Did I achieve my goal? Oh, yes, I did. I made a million point five and above. Did a lot of stuff that I even expected. When you want to see, let me tell you something. And this is one of the big, and this something that is not, and that's why, you know, the church in Africa is very, it's full of so many poor Christians. You know, you know that's where, uh, uh, um, how they call this thing? That's where church rights came from. That's where the concept church rights came from. Because Christians tend to be so poor that they say they call it the church rats. Because in the church, any rat in the church will never find food because there's never food in church. There's never meat in church. So any church, any rat in church will die poor because there's nothing to eat in church, right? Even if there's communion, they will eat the bread and drink the wine on Sunday and on Monday the church is empty, right? That's where the concept of where People started calling Christians church rats came from. Because Christians actually pray, oh Lord, open the windows of heaven. Yes, it's, very, it's a very good prayer point. Oh Lord, encounter me with your favor. Very good prayer point. Lord, open doors for me. Very valid prayer points. But you see, all of these prayer points, even God himself cannot make it come to pass. When you making the prayer, you are not in alignment with the will of God for your life as far as taking personal responsibility is concerned. Okay? So, how to take personal responsibility? In other words, you need to walk your, I like to call it financial salvation with fear and trembling, right? Yes, there's something that because I call it, I, I say financial salvation with fear and trembling. It's a, it's a concept of personal responsibility for your finances, right? I took that concept from this Philippians chapter two, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, beloved of PS, hear me. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, right? Go and obey this teaching, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. 
Then the last statement says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, with um, um, the deduce of that, I said, work out your own financial salvation. What is financial salvation? You have grown to a place where there are many things that you do effortlessly and at ease. You don't do things, there's no lack. Anybody who has experienced financial salvation doesn't experience there are certain things that they do effortlessly because there's no lack. The money is there. And you need to work out your financial salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean? Fear and trembling is the art of taking personal responsibility and making the right financial decisions and choices based on the quality of your financial intelligence. So how to take personal responsibility that will influence your finances? Number one, number one, the first step, follow me carefully. This is some, these are things that I do when I work, I, do, I coach many clients on financial I, 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 I'm, a, I'm, I'm an investment advisor and, and wealth creation consultant to some high profile people that you know how to make more money and to build sustainable, sustainable wealth. So these are things that we work, work with them and see results, right? Now, the first step, acknowledge your role in your financial situation. Yes, acknowledge your role in your financial situation. Many people are still broke because they want to blame the government of the country where they are. They want to blame their family members. They want to blame how they grew up. Blame everybody else. The first step, the first step, the first step to taking personal responsibility that you will see a change in your finances. Is acknowledge your role in the situation. This means recognizing that your actions, your decisions and behaviors have an impact on your finances. Never forget this. Your actions, your decisions, and your behaviors have an impact on your finances. This is the meaning of acknowledging your role in the situation. If you are listening to me and you have not grown to the place of acknowledgement that whatever actions you take today, whatever decisions you make today, whatever behaviors you make today have an impact on your finances now and in the next 10 years, five years, 15, 20, 30 years, you are not yet serious with your finances. That is why they always say, I was reading a book and they said, among the top five decisions that will change your finances, the decision or the choice of who you marry will either destroy you financially or change your life financially. Then I always add, if you are dating somebody and you guys have never had a discussion around money, or you don't know the money mindset of your spouse, of your partner, you are not yet ready for marriage. A marriage that finances are not sorted out will be a marriage of trouble because 99% of marital problems is money problems. Dear young man, if you can guarantee that a brother that your bank account is good, then your wife will be very surprised. <laughs> that was just an aside, right? But some, some, some of the quarrels and fights and all of that, in many marriages, unnecessary head that sometimes somebody is unemotionally stable because he or she is broke, the husband is broke, the wife is broke, the family is broke. Now they are under pressure. Now disrespect starts setting in. People start, people are just angry anyhow, anyhow. Now poverty, the sponsor, all that thing as well. For those who are still to get married, have a discussion around money. Know the money mindset of the person you want to marry. Some, some, some gentlemen, you are marrying a woman who spends anyhow, I want to wear the latest dress and the latest shoe. She, she, she is a shopping addict. Little money, she thinks only of shopping. She's the typical consumption magnet. That is the failure of your home financially. Some ladies, you are dating a man who doesn't consciously think of how money works. He's not focused on how to make money. 
how to keep money, how to manage money, and how to multiply money. You are marrying a man who put you through financial stress. These are things that people ignore and they have not paid the price for it or they have not gone deep to understand. They go and interview many people who are married. They will tell you these are things they didn't talk about and they started finding difficulties in their marriage because of financial issues or unnecessary pressure and problem setting. Married people who are here right now can tell you this stuff today. They can tell you. Know the mindset. You can do your own observation. I told my baby one that I know your money mindset. Let me explain. This is how you think about money. Everybody has weaknesses and strength as far as money is concerned, including me. Everybody don't know your weakness and know your strength. Let me tell you one of my weaknesses. I am I am I I can too much invest and forget to leave. To leave good is a weakness. It's good to invest, but don't don't be invest and self too too much selfish, <laughs> right? So you need to learn how to balance that, and that's financial intelligence. So know your money mindset. Some people they can spend for Africa immediately. Money enters their hand. They're thinking of what to buy, not what to build. The difference between a lady that will go far in finances and the lady will be broke for the rest of her life is when a lady receives 10,000 francs as a gift from somebody, a broke lady with a broke mindset would think of burning fish and a shoe to buy. That's the first thought. If you are here and when your money comes here and you think of immediately what to buy and consume, you are a potential broke, poor human being. But if you are here and money comes into your hands and the first thing you think about is let me keep and think of how to multiply and get times two of this. You may not be manifesting that yet, but that is the first step to wealth and riches. Are you getting me? Acknowledge your role in your financial situation. Recognize that your actions, decisions, and behaviors have an impact on your finances. The second thing on how to take responsibility that will influence your finances is refrain from blaming others. I was talking about it already. Refrain from blaming others. Please stop blaming the government. I'm not saying that you have a perfect government in your country, whatever you're listening to this from. But re remove your eyes from blaming the government. Stop blaming how you, your poor family. Stop blaming your mom, your dad, your uncle, your, your this. Stop blaming your boyfriend, your, your husband. Your, refrain from all of that nonsense. Stop blaming others or even external circumstances. There are many people who have still remained broke because somebody duped them. They lost money. Money was stolen. They invested money in a fake money scheme, in a Ponzi scheme. Then they... In their heads is full of blame here and there. If, so their head can no longer think of better ways to make money. Their head is full of blame instead of creation. It is creators that make wealth. It is proactive and people that take initiatives that build wealth and riches. Blamers don't do that because their mind is full of darkness and blames. So they cannot focus on creation, contribution, proactiveness, and taking initiative that can change their financial life. So if you are here, you once lost money, and you have been feeling down and sad and depressed and focusing your mind on the blame, oh, if none of this thing, if, not, if they did not steal my money, if they did not do this, I'd have been better move from that place. That's the place of poor and broke people. You have lost the money already. Focus on remaking the money. And let me tell you the good news. That money you lost, you made it. It therefore means that, means that the strength, the ideas, the wisdom, the intelligence to remake the money and make it double is inside of you. Reuse it and double make the money and make it better. Stop crying over lost money. Retain that energy. Refocus that energy to remake the money times 10. So refrain from blaming others. Refrain from blaming circumstances. 
and take responsibility for your actions and for your decisions. Until you begin to do this, building riches and wealth will be far from you. Number three, on how to take personal responsibility that will influence your finances. Number three, are you taking down notes? I hope this is, this is, this is reorientating somebody's heart and mind as far as money is concerned and building wealth is concerned. Some things that you have been neglecting you're, you're going to go back to it and begin to make decisions, right? Good. Number three, on how to take personal responsibility that will influence your finances. Goal setting, financial goal setting. Financial goal setting. Let me tell you something mind-blowing, eh? something real and mind-blowing, right? Let me tell you something mind-blowing. Every rich person that I coach this year. Now in, in coaching and consulting, mostly in December or in January, you, you always work with your clients to plan for the next year or for the present year, right? Let me tell you something mind-blowing about rich people. Right? Guys who make money, right? All of them that I worked with this year, everybody will come with a goal like, well, one, one person came to me and said, hey, um, Dr. Driver, see, um, this year, I, I, I want my two companies to make at least 500 million francs in profit. Are you guys getting that? Financial goal setting, smart goals, numbers. He didn't say, I want to make money. I'll give you many other guys. Very clear. My, my, Dr. German, my financial goal for this year is how can, I, how can the company make 500 million francs in profit this year? So, our strategy plan for this year, our strategies, our everything, I want you to work with me to achieve this goal. You get the concept? That is the art of taking absolute personal responsibility. Play financial goal setting. If you are listening to me and you don't have a written number somewhere in your diary, in your journal, in your notepad, in your sticky notes, you don't have it written somewhere clearly your financial goal for this year. You are not yet taking complete personal responsibility for your finances. For, for some people, they have their 10-year financial goal. Then they have expectations of where they want to be 10 years from now financially. What about you? Wealthy individuals set clear and achievable financial goals. Individuals that have wealthy mindset. You may be struggling right now financially, but you can have a wealthy mindset. It takes a wealthy mindset to handle wealth in your hands and your bank account. Until you have a wealthy mindset, forget about handling the money. Wealthy individuals, individuals with wealthy mindset, set clear and achieve a financial goal and create a plan to achieve them. Every financial goal you have, create a plan on how to achieve it. Let me tell you one thing, one default thing I do with my clients. When they come to me and they say, oh, Jobert, I want to make 500 million this year. First of all, we go back to the default place. I tell them, okay, good. What do you want to sell this year? We write it down. How much does this cost? Write it down. How many people need to buy this thing for you to make 500 million? Oh, you know what? To make 500 million, we need to sell this product to 200,000 people this year. Okay. Where do we get the 200,000? That's why I start building the plan from there. If you are thinking about making money, you're staying good for making money, create a plan on how you will make the money. And the plan you have, what are you going to do to make the money? How many people are going to pay for that thing for you to make the money? How are you going to locate these people to take your money and give them what they want? Are you getting me? So that is the third thing that you need to do to take financial responsibility for your life. Number four, track your progress and adjust your actions as needed. Yes, 
One sign that you take absolute responsibilities, you track your financial progress and adjust your actions. Personally for me, I like to track my financial progress every three, three months. Every three, three months, I check my financial progress. Okay, my financial goal for this year was this. Therefore, for me to achieve my financial goals, every after three months, I must have made this amount of money. I like to do that. What about you? Track your progress and adjust your actions as needed. If you are really serious that you have taken financial responsibility, you are very good at tracking your progress. Some people who are very rugged and very detailed, they do it every month. Yes. Some do it every week. Most of my mentees, they do it every week. Most of my mentees who are not stable financially, they submit to me how much they have made every week. Every week you submit to me, this is how much I have made every week, every week. That means on before Monday, you tell me that your goal for this week financially is to make this amount of money. On Saturday, you give me feedback that you made this much. You don't just wake up and you're financially rich. I've been on my mentor that have become millionaires. That I've been for two years, three years, four years. They're going to become millionaires because they are, when you walk, you are very detailed and very deep, very conscious. You don't wake up, you don't do guesswork and experience financial success. That's the most funny thing that many people think about money. We're just managing and see how it's going to go. That's nonsense, nonsense statement. Or they're just there doing nothing and expecting a miracle to happen in your finances. Financial change in your life is an art and it's a science. So you need to make it work. So track your progress, track your financial progress and adjust your actions as needed. Number five, number five, the commitments to do only things that will play a big positive impact in your finances. This is one of my favorite things in taking responsibility for your finances. You make the commitments that you will do on the things that will play a big positive impact in your finances. I like to call it financial productive actions, FPA, financial productive actions. You as an individual, you listening to me, you have so grown to a place where you have taken the responsibility that from today, you will do only things that will play a big positive impact in your finances. Anything that will not play a positive impact in your finances, you are not doing it. For example, how does drinking alcohol too much contribute to your finances? If no, don't do it. How does going to club, how does, what, is, what, what stupid things do people do nowadays? How does watching a movie for four hours contribute to your financial life? How does browsing on social media for four hours, watching TikTok videos, wasting your internet data for those in Africa or wasting your Wi-Fi and all of that, you're not only wasting Wi-Fi, you're wasting your time. How does that play a big positive impact in your finances? There's one thing I do. If I'm, if I'm going to do anything, I need to be very clear that this action I am taking plays a big positive impact in my financial life, my career, and my business. If not, I am not interested. I am not interested. What about you? Look at your daily life right now. Look at your daily life from the last since January started. Look at your daily life up to now. Let me ask you a very blunt, straightforward question. All the things that you have done, are these things playing a big positive impact in your finances? Now or tomorrow? Because this impact can be direct or indirect. 
There are some things that when you do, immediately there's a financial reward. There are some that when you do, the financial reward will come later. Like, for example, building yourself. When you invest in yourself, build your capacity, build your mindset, build your competence, build your knowledge. You may not see the direct impact immediately, but let me tell you, the indirect impact is there. Is there. Someday, instead of paying you $100, they can pay you $10,000 because you have grown, because of the quality of your competence and skills that you bring to the table, because you have been taking actions over the years to build your value. There's a direct impact in your finances. I hope that you share a particular testimony, right? Let's say 10 years ago, Many times I was speaking at events, they would give me, they may give me 10,000, 5,000, all of that for one hour, for two hours. But over the years, I have developed my craft. I've become so good at what I do. I've become so excellent at it. But now I can charge uh, $5,000 from out of Cameroon and come I can charge a million francs, two million, three million, depending on where, where I'm at. And I'm, and I'm paid for an hour or two hours to do the work I do that I used to do 10 years ago. But the difference, the difference in how I get paid and how much I get paid is I have grown in my craft. I have grown in my capacity. I have grown in my knowledge. I have grown my intelligence. I have grown in the brand. I have grown in the perception. All of these things. When I used to buy books, I used to study overnight and all of that. I never used to see the direct impact by then. But now, the indirect impact that I've been building over time by then now pays today. And this is something, if you are still at the lowest level of your financial growth, this is something you have to be conscious about. You need to make the commitment to do only things that will play a big positive impact in your finances directly or indirectly, immediately or in the long term. The next point, point number what? What's the next point? Number, let me see if you are following. Point number, give me a comment. PF members. Point number six. Take responsibility for your financial intelligence. Take responsibility for your financial intelligence. Let me tell you something. You will never make money above the quality of your knowledge about money. And if you are serious about experiencing financial freedom and building wealth, you need to know four things about money. That means if you are really serious at knowing how money works, you should know four things. Number one, how do people make money? Number two, how to keep money. Learning how to discipline yourself. That's why you know, when you keep money that you want to save, two days later, your body is itching. You go withdraw it and buy something. Something is wrong with you. Until you are through that anxiety or that itchy, 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 itchiness, always going to cash out money and buy things that you don't even need to impress people who don't care about you. You will never be free from poverty, let me tell you. Number one, know how to make money. Know how people, that's why I need, my latest book I just published, that talks about 40 business models on how people make money across Africa, on how businesses make money across Africa. If you go through that book, you would never lack an idea on how to make money. Some of them can start with little capital. One thing, then I can never be broke. You know why? I know how people make money. I know different tactics to make money. When you on that, when you this, and, and that's just level one of money making. Understand how to make money. Look at other business models. Like for how, how do restaurants make money? Okay, they cook food and sell. Start. Now just grow your mind from there. No different avenues. They call it business modeling. Not the different models of making money. The most primary way 
that everybody knows that money is to do something and get paid in the form of salary. But there are higher dimensions you can go in it. And that's your job. It's part of finance intelligence. Know how to make money. Number two, know how to keep money. Know how to create a deposit account. Keep money there and don't withdraw it. Discipline yourself and not withdraw it. It's a powerful discipline that can change and make, can change your life. Keep money and discipline yourself and allow it there. Number three, manage the money. What does that mean? Know how to, the money that, as you make money, if you are keeping money, keep. Know how to manage the money. What percentage of your monthly income goes for your expenses? What percentage goes for your expenses? Don't just make money. So I want to advise people. Your house rent should never be more than 50% of your monthly income. Avoid that kind of decision. It's better you live in a smaller house and save and increase your finances before you move to a bigger house. Avoid, if you, are, if, you are, if, you, if you are making money and your house rent alone is bigger than, is, is 50% more than your monthly income, you're in trouble. Before feeding, before other stuff, you would definitely never save. And I can guarantee you that every month you live under financial stress. Every month you live under financial stress. That's managing money. Know how to allocate the money that comes in. Many people make good money, but they are still broke because they don't know how to manage the money. That's one part of financial intelligence. There was a mentee of mine who came to me, was it last year? That's one of my mentees that they, they are very open to me to the, to the least details they want to be asked for advice. So he came to me and, and was like, um, so I want to move to a bigger, I want to move to a bigger house. So he was in a one room and wanted to move into a studio. So the first question, the mommy was like, ah, did they increase the salary? So he, he's a worker. Did they increase the salary? Or did the business you start as the profit increase, as it grown? That was the first thing I asked him. That's why I reasoned me. And he was like, no. I was like, so what gives the audacity to move to a bigger house? He said, no. So I just feel like I think... Uh, Looking at me right now, I need to move to a bigger. I said, that's ara nonsense. So I immediately there and there, I gave him a goal. I said, until your monthly income has increased by at least 30%. For example, if your monthly income is 100,000 francs, until you grow to 130,000 francs every month, stay in the house. Shut up and stay in the house. He said, yes, sir. Guess what? It took him one year. One year to increase. And that was something that I gave him now that challenged him to take serious responsibility to improve his financial life. He was making money, but he didn't know how to manage the money. There are some of you that you need to know how to manage your money and how you help people. There are some people that they, are, they will remain poor because of how they help family members. Everybody, every little problem, they come to you. Every little problem, they come to you. And that's why you're, you're, you're just give money. Just give money. Just give money. Just give money. If you die today, they'll go look for somebody else and begin to buy from. Let me give you a secret, secret wisdom on how to handle uh, giving our money so that you make good use. It's part of, it's part of managing money. I hear what I did for that's what I did myself. Every month I keep a percentage of my monthly income that goes for helps. I call it helps budget. In this helps budget, this is where families and some friends come in. So if you come to me for something and okay, I'll give I'll just be a free you. If you think that I'm not, I'll, I'll, no, hey, I, I'm giving it for I know exactly how much I can spend for my monthly income to help somebody who the families come for help. So that percentage is there. And that percentage depends on you, depending on your, on your monthly income. Hear me very well. Now, when I do that, 
if you come to me for help from the family, and that, that budget for the money, I'll give you. Immediately that budget is finished, in my heart is very clear, except it's a matter of life and death. If you come to me for anything from the family, you are on your own. I will tell you, wait for next month. If you cannot wait, go and look for your son. Don't put it under pressure. Your emergency is not my emergency. It's not wickedness, it's wisdom, it's boundaries. There are many people that they are in debt. They are in, uh, how do you call it? Uh, they, are, they, are in, they are in serious poverty because they are just, they are, I don't want to call it compassion. I want to call it stupid pity. Every little thing, they just give money, give money, give money, give money, money. And then they are left with nothing to, let me tell you, until you are financially stable, you can never truly help your family member. And that's a fact many people don't want to accept. So you set, set clear boundaries. Don't just give it, and that's part of managing money. You can give me money out anyhow, 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 anyhow. What other nonsense is that? Have clear boundaries. Then keep the rest for multiplication. There's another mentee who came to me, a young man in Douala, struggling for his life. He's from a royal family. They now came to him and they said, uh, they want to do a memorial service. Just here, memorial service. And they now said, he has to contribute 70,000 francs. A young man whose salary is not up to 80,000 francs. You are pushing him that he should contribute 70,000 francs. For memorials, it's not even hospital be that somebody is dead, is the sick, and the person needs emergency operation. We can understand that one. Memorial service. You are punishing a young man who is trying to make ends meet to contribute uh, some hundred thousand francs. What I told him, said, if I hear you send that money in the village, tell them that your mentor said that you don't have money and you don't say anything. He, that guy was shaking. They are putting a young man under pressure for memorial service of somebody who is dead, rotten, and gone. The name of my family, I don't entertain memorial service. Hey, I'm very clear about that. I don't entertain. If, I, when I die, I'm gone. Don't bother me. How do you call it? Memorialing me. Is that, that's very English. No, I'm not interested in my death. I'm dead. I'm dead. Forget that nonsense. Memorial, what would that change? Somebody that lives with that, he has gone. And that's suffering people to memorial what? I don't believe in that nonsense. Remember, if you call me to call memorial service, they will shout at you. I'm not interested and I'm not coming. That's my personal opinion. It's a waste of time, waste of money, waste of resources. You can remember the person for his life that is lived. They acknowledge him, love. Yeah, it's good. Nothing wrong with that. But after that, Sometimes, I why some certain things are so intense. That now you push a young man who is barely surviving in Douala to now, and the, the only option this young man had was to borrow 700,000 francs. Now, enter in debt that he may take about a year to pay, looking at his monthly income. What, what is that? That's how people grow in poverty. Instead of growing in riches, we are growing in poverty. Why? Financial intelligence, money management. Money management. Know how to manage. And then the last part is know how to multiply money and make it sustainable. So we talk about if you are good at setting up a business that can last for years and consistently make money for you, settle the business. If you, are, you can invest and buy shares and stocks in an international company, you can save money towards that and buy shares and stocks. You can go into land banking, buy lands, buy many lands and keep for land banking for two, three years, sell it, buy more and sell and make profit, whatever. Find a way to multiply the money you have been keeping. That is financial intelligence. Understand, take the response. That you are here and you have never bought a book on money. I always advise people, one of the most important books that you need to read 
at the age of 20 and above, even 18 even, is any book that talks about how money works, a book that can increase your financial intelligence. If you are here and you have never bought a book, I, I've written two books this year. There's a book on wealth creation for young people, and there's a book on achieving financial stability and sustainability. That I've already written them. They're just ready to, to be published, right? I'll read that within this year, maybe before June. And I'm not saying you buy my book for now, right? But if you can buy a different book that can help you to understand the art and science behind money, please do. It's one of your most important investments. You can buy Rich Dad, Poor Dad, one of the best financial books on earth. Okay? Good. So these things are very important. If you don't take absolute responsibility for your finances and your life, your financial life will never change, okay? Now we are, we are beyond time, so I'll just highlight some prayer points for us to pray. Pray after within the week, within the day. I'll try to share in the WhatsApp group, all right? So I'll share prayer points on, uh, um, there'll be a prayer point on you um, praying for asking the blood of Jesus to visit your foundation. I will just explain. Now, this is important because it's possible to be working hard. Meanwhile, your foundation is evil. It could be from a curse, from, from, from wrong family foundation that is fighting your finances. You're working like an elephant and reaping the result like an ant. It could be because the foundation is tarnished. There is some evil in your foundation. The best way to cleanse your financial foundation is to plead the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Edel, okay? Then the next prayer point you're gonna pray is from Psalms 34 verse 17. Psalms 34 verse 17, the Bible says that the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their trouble. Let me tell you, it is difficult to experience financial success and riches when your life is full of troubles. When troubles come, you're always spending money on trouble. Like there are some people that either they are sick or their kids are sick. Every month you are in the hospital. That's trouble. You are always, there's so many you save, you, you, you spend in the hospital. Or you're always in accidents. Or things are, you, like you, you, you always go through trouble that, that requires you to spend money. Sometimes it's a hole in your pocket bust by the enemy. Many people are never conscious. For, for if you are here and you have noticed a pattern, then immediately money enters your hand. You're always afraid of a problem that will arise. Like the people said, oh, let me just spend this money now before problems come. Have you just told me like that? Yes. Like the people that have noticed that in their life, immediately money touched their hand. There's always trouble that arises that will require them to spend that money. They cannot just keep money in their bank account for planning to reinvest and is there safely. Trouble will come and swallow the money. You need to pray that prayer point. That, oh Lord, do not let financial problems crumble my plans and visions. I want to pray for God to deliver you from every trouble that is crumbling your finances. Because immediately your finances are, uh, are in trouble, your goals and your visions, your plans and your destinies will be in trouble. There's no purpose that doesn't require money. There's, there are no goals that do not require money. Okay? Then you're going to pray the next prayer point. Then you're going to pray that as you take responsibility from today, as we begin to take responsibility from today, the Lord should honor his word and bless the works of your hands because the art of taking responsibility is you are going to be ethical and diligent in the works of your hands. You are going to pray that God, by his favor, God will honor his word, bless your hands. He will cause you to experience open doors in your career and in your business as you take responsibility, okay? So take time and go through these prayer points, create time during your private time, morning, in the night, whatever time, go through and pray them. And I guarantee you, you will see changes in your finances. Prayers have a powerful role to play as far as your journey to financial success is concerned. 
but prayer on its own is limited. Okay? All right. Let me pray for you now as we close. Just lift up your hands and just come pray in tongues. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, for your transformation. Lord, I pray for everyone here. I pray for every professional. I pray, Lord, for every businessman. Lord, may you honor your word in their life today and give everyone the strength to make wealth in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree and I declare anybody on going through any trouble, going through any storms of life that warrant them to lose money in solving problems by authority in the name of Jesus. I command every storm to cease in Jesus' name. I command every trouble to come to an end in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. For everybody doing anything, oh God, may you honor your word in their lives and bless the works of their hands in the name of Jesus. Honor your word in their lives and bless the works of their hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for divine ideas. Lord, divine ideas. Lord, divine ideas. Lord, divine ideas. Father, divine ideas upon somebody. Divine ideas from somebody. Divine ideas that will transform. That will transform somebody's financial life. In the name of Jesus. Father, encamp somebody with their favor. Lord, encamp everyone with their favor. Anybody going out for a business deal. Anybody going out for a career trip. Whatever, oh God. Let your favor speak for them. In the name of Jesus. May they find favor before great men and women in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Receive the glory. We recognize you as our source. We recognize you as the lifter of our heads. And we recognize you as the one that blessed the rest of our hands. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen and amen. God bless you. I hope that you were blessed. And I am believing God for a total transformation after today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we continue next week with our teaching on how to build wealth and riches. And of course, please note that um, after tomorrow, not tomorrow, on the 7th, we are having a master class, a master class on how to build professional credibility. Don't miss that master class. It's on it's on 7 p.m. Cameroon time on Tuesday. Okay, 7 p.m. Cameroon time on Tuesday. Don't miss that master class because it is very important and it's part of building wealth. When you build the right professional credibility as a professional, as an entrepreneur, you increase your chances of getting access to life, changing opportunities that will change your life. Okay, good. So be part of it Tuesday, 7 p.m. Cameroon time and uh, don't miss it. Okay, God bless you and have a great week ahead. You are blessed and you're going out and you're coming in in the name of Jesus. Whatever I touch this week is blessed and you will experience multiplication in Jesus' name. God bless you. Take care.